preach a little truth to our fathers here today. Uh, appreciate all the compliments, cards, stuff like that. I've already got this morning, and text and stuff like that. One little boy, they said he went to the store to get his... Mama's going to let him pick out a Father's Day card. He kept picking one out, and he'd look at it and put it back. He picked out another and looked at it and put it back. He picked out another and looked at it and put it back. He said, what's wrong, son? Can't you find one you like? He said, I'm looking for the kind that's got money in them. <laughs> he thought you got them at the store like that. Uh, but that's the way kids are a lot of times. Ain't that right? Well, they, they, there was four men, ex- fathers, with their wives in the maternity uh, place having babies. Four men in the waiting room. The nurse comes out. She tells the person, she said, you're not going to believe this. You're having twins. You're the father of twins. The guy jumps up and he said, isn't that the strangest thing? I work for the Minnesota twins and supply them with stuff. He said, isn't that the coolest thing? She came out a minute later. She told the second guy, she said, you're not going to believe this. You are the father of triplets. He said... That's the weirdest thing. I work for AAA. I can't believe that. And that's strange. She came out the next one. She said, you're not going to believe this. You are the father of quadruplets, four of them. He said, my goodness, I work for Four Seasons Hotel. The next guy jumped up and started running out screaming, oh, no, I work at 7-Eleven. <laughs> I don't think that's got nothing to do with it. I hope not. But anyway... Uh, life changes when them, when them babies come in the picture. Amen? Sure do. And let's look at what the Bible said in 1 John 2 and verse 13. We're talking about earthly fathers this morning. Our heavenly Father lets us be called Father. My, what an honor. 1 John 5, 2, 13. I write unto you, fathers... Because you have known him that is from the beginning. That's God. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I've written to you, little children, because you've known the Father. 14 again. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you're strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father, capital F, that would be God, is not in him. Just for a few minutes this morning, I want to give you five things that make a great father. Simple little principles that make a great father. And any man in here can have and be these five things. If you're a father here this morning or have been fathered by a a father, uh, this is for you. If not, maybe you were raised in an unfortunate situation where you didn't have a father or an earthly dad, it'll help you maybe to fill in some of the void that was left there by a father not being in the home. Maybe you, as a woman, have raised kids by yourself. Also, it'll help you, especially with boys, to get them a a mentor, an uncle or a preacher, somebody that can mentor your your boy and a a father role model to them. A lot of kids find themselves in a place where they're not being raised, especially nowadays by their real earthly father, but others can step in and play that role and meet the need of those kids. To all of you who raise kids, feed kids, train kids, I don't care if he's 18 or 80, if he's doing that job, This is for him this morning. Little simple outline, five things. Number one, a great father is a protector. A great father is a protector. You can see this. It's it's in our DNA to protect our family, our wife, and our children. Animals got it. Animals, I mean, try to go in and and steal some little baby chickens. uh, or uh, No, the mother, daddy will fight you. They they are a protector. Father is concerned about your well-being. He's concerned about his children. Now, you may not like it, and it may may get on your nerves. Uh, uh, My girls sitting over there, all three of them over there this morning, I'm sure sometimes it gets on their nerves. Where are you at? 
you know. Uh, who's that? Who else? Is, who's that? Uh, you know, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know what daddy is? He's a natural protector, especially over kids as they're growing up. And girl, it's, it's built inside of you to protect your family. I'm, I'm telling you, there's something wrong uh, with a man who, uh, when, the, when somebody's breaking in the house, uh, he says, honey, you get, go get the gun and see who it is. Uh, I, I'll, I'll watch over the bed here. You know, something wrong with a man like that. There's something wrong with a man that makes his wife answer the phone when the bill collector's called. Uh, the man is a natural protector over his family. He, he needs to make sure that you are safe. He protects you against the enemy. He'll step out in front of you. He'll, he'll protect you against false doctrine. A real man will know the Bible, and he'll know what doctrine is right. He'll know what religious beliefs are correct, and he'll protect his family from false doctrine and false teaching. False doctrine and false teaching is... is is bad or worse than letting their teeth rot, friend, or letting them miss school. A lot more important. Amen? And he is a protector. Sometimes he don't even say anything, but he is protecting. It's like, a, it's sort of like a big wind's blowing. There's way up, 80 mile an hour wind, and you got daddy, mama, and kids. He stands there in front of you and takes the brunt of, of the wind. That's the way a daddy does. He takes, he takes it first. And you don't feel a lot of the times uh, how strong that wind is blowing uh, because daddy is taking it in front of him. You know, one of the saddest things uh, that kids have to face is they don't realize all their daddy did until after he's gone. If I was standing here in front of you and this wind was blowing real hard and I'm standing like this protecting you, you ain't going to realize it until I'm out of the way and blam, it hits you. And then you'll say, I never knew my daddy was doing all that. I never realized my daddy was taking it like he was. I didn't realize how much he protected me. I didn't realize. Lord, I did not know he was dealing with all this. He was blocking stuff that I never even knew about. And ladies and gentlemen, a real man is a protector. Now, my daddy, y'all have heard me talk about my dad. Daddy was not, not a Christian. My mom married, met my daddy's family. Uh, daddy was born on Rock Castle Creek in uh, Rock Castle, Kentucky. And that's right on the border of Kentucky and West Virginia. And, and they just crossed the river and you're in West Virginia. So all the family, his side, grew up in West Virginia. His sisters, all of them, there's nine or ten of them. His mother died when he was little, and that, they raised herself. They were raised, Mom always said, they were raised like animals. And so he didn't know nothing, didn't know anything about uh, how to survive in the world. They had to, they had to train themselves. And Daddy didn't have an education. He couldn't read. Uh, and, uh, but I'm telling you what, uh, he, he was a protector. He was definitely a protector. And uh, he, I'm, when my sisters were about 15, 16, 17, 18, they got boyfriends and they started wanting to date. And I'll never forget, we had this dog. We had this collie dog named Nick. He was about that tall, and he looked just like Lassie. And, and that was a good dog, beautiful collie dog. They used, my sisters combed his hair, and he was that, ever what color uh, hair collies have, orange, uh, uh, red, blonde, uh, brown, and they, and they, and they uh, mocked him all the time and messed with him all the time. And Nick did not like anybody coming in our yard. I mean, he'd bite you. He'd, he'd show them, and he'd bite you. And there wasn't none of them beware of dog signs, tie him up, all the dogs run loose. I, I feel sorry for a dog. Somebody hems it up all the time. And, uh, dogs run loose back then. Everybody's dead. And uh, my sister had a boyfriend, and for some reason, that dog hated that boy. I mean, he could see him coming in the driveway, and he'd come around there showing, and I've seen that boy run, jump on the porch. He bit him two or three times, and uh, he did. And uh, he, he'd come to see my sister, and he'd have to fight through that dog every time. Well, one night, Daddy, Daddy let my girl go on, uh, my, my sister go on a date, and they was out uh, late, and he said, you got to be home by 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, you be in this driveway, and I mean it. Well, it was about uh, 5 after 11. I heard this story later. I was about, I was about uh, 11 or 12 years old, 13, and uh, it was about 5 after 11. That car come easing up the driveway, and uh, they, they said uh, the boys got out. It was two of them, my two sisters, and one of them got out and said, Shh, be quiet. We, we're, we're, I'm scared of that dog. And about that time, 11, they thought Mom and Dad was asleep. 
right out of the bushes with a shotgun. I like my daddy. He come out there and said, "I'm one you better be scared of." And buddy, they liked to have a heart attack. They liked to have a heart attack. And I'm telling you, you know, he he put a little fear of God in them guys. I think he had a shotgun on uh, that night. And then when my girls, my girls, they can tell you right now, when Carrie first started getting up, boys started calling the house and coming around. And I I hated every one of them. I, one one time one call one called the house one time, and he said uh, he said uh, Is Chris is there. I said, who is this? And he said his name. I said, who are you? Got a job? And that scared that boy to death. And Daddy, Daddy went halfway up our driveway. Y'all know our driveway goes straight up like that. And he got an old pair of boots. He had my sister Sandy make him a sign. He had an old pair of work boots like this. And he dug a ditch halfway up my driveway and put them boots sticking up out of the ground like that. Like a dead man in there. And he had, my sister made him a sign, and he went over and drove it up in the driveway, and it said, this is what happened to the last man that come to see my, grand, my granddaughter. And they, every time they come up that driveway, they had to look at that. You know what he was doing? He was protecting them. <laughs> Amen? Uh, he was protecting them. Ladies and gentlemen, he was protecting them. A real Father is a protector. I mean, every man in here would fight for your family. The Bible said if we don't provide for our family, we're denied the faith worse than an infidel. A man's not a good father that wouldn't fight for his family and take care of those that God has entrusted him with. Amen? I'm telling you, brother, uh, I know the kids get on your nerves. I know they get on the nerves, but, buddy, we'd step up. I mean, even if we was mad at them, we'd step up and protect them, right? That's right. About this guy the other day, he said... Uh, his daughter turned 16, and he said, uh, I want you to take me a ride. She said, okay, Daddy, hop in. And he got in the back seat, and she was ready to go. She said, why are you sitting back there? He said, because I'm going to sit back here and kick the back of your seat the whole time, so I've been waiting to get you back for that for years and years and years. I'd be driving down the road, boom, you feel something in your back like that. Quit kicking that seat. I, know, I see a lot of parents here and nodding your head. If you ain't never had kids, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, a real daddy is a protector. You keep them. You take care of them. You can, I'll tell you what I've done. Uh, years ago uh, in Marion, when we take all them big trips, we'd take sometimes 100, 120 kids on a trip somewhere, took them all over Washington, D.C. They sing in downtown New York City and Times Square at the Washington Monument, everywhere. We all them kids everywhere. And I mean, God uh, bless them. And I, I remember we'd have a bus and eight or ten cars going, and we'd go on a trip, and I had 15 people asking me questions at the same time, and I was trying to study in my head and pray and make sure this was right and this car wouldn't start and so-and-so's late and what time we're going to get there. And I remember taking my kid over there, and they'd say, Daddy, can we ride with so-and-so? Daddy, can we ride with so-and-so? And I'd say, yeah, you can ride with them. I'd say, can I? No. And, they, and they'd say, why? Because I said so. You ride with so-and-so. And they'd say, Daddy, can I ride with so-and-so? No, you ride with so-and-so. And I'd make them all ride in three different cars. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, if they all three in one car and they had a wreck, every one of them would be hurt or killed. And ain't all of them going to wreck. So I'm going to spread them out. They didn't know that's what I was doing. But I was thinking, man, you know, you have a natural instinct. I remember we'd go places like this and we'd be driving and there'd be eight, ten cars behind me and there'd be one car that Carrie, she would be driving. And I'd look back, you know, and I didn't want nobody to wreck. I didn't want nobody to have a wreck. And I watched so whatever, but I really watched for her car. You know what I mean? You, want, you don't want nobody to get hurt, but you really don't want your kids to get hurt. Amen? That's right. A real father is a protector. Number two, a real father is a provider. He's a provider. Amen? He'll raise a young man to be tough. I don't think you ought to baby boys. Baby, let them get, let them get their nose bloody a little bit. Uh, if I get in a fight with school, say, well, do better next time. Apologize if you're in the wrong. Uh, take up for yourself. Quit whining. Quit whining. I, uh, you should, a boy should not have, be around there and say, oh, look, I got hurt. I got hurt. I got hurt. And that's mama stuff. That's mama stuff. That's girl stuff. Uh, uh, Daddy say, oh, you'll be all right. Uh, you, 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 you ain't going to die. Yeah, a boy, uh, a man ought to do that. A man ought to do that. Teach 
teach a young man to be tough. Teach him he's going to get his knees bloodied up once in a while. Let him know it's tough. Let him know you've got to be tough in this world uh, to make it through. You can't just kiss it all away every single time. I mean, life gets tough sometimes, people. And a real man provides for his family. He provides money. He provides wisdom. He provides uh, friendship. He provides counsel. He provides uh, perspective. He pre- provides insight. And let me say to all you men here, we instruct men with our words, but we teach them by our example. You do a whole lot more teaching just by things you do and the way you handle situations and the way you do stuff than the words that come out of your mouth. God help the man that says, don't do as I do, do as I say do. God help the man that says, I ain't right, but you go to church, but I ain't going. God help the man that says, it don't matter what I do, you do this or that. A a real man provides. He provides an example. And by the way, it's not all about money. Some people say, well, I work the best I can to give my kids everything I can to make more money. That's good, but it ain't all about money. They need a lot more than money. He may not make as much money as the man down the road. You may not have a bigger salary as the other guy that lives down the street, but he's in there scratching and working every single day. There's no replacement for a man that'll get up and go to work every day and provide for his family. We're made that way. It's instinct. I'm telling you this morning, a real daddy is a provider. We didn't have much growing up. We wasn't rich by nobody's standards. In our class at school there at Nebo, those kids had a lot nicer stuff, nicer clothes. But I'll never one time that I can remember went home and wondered, was there going to be food at the house to eat? Never even crossed my mind. I never thought, I hear kids coming in here talking about, what well, mom and daddy God, if we don't get the light bill paid, they're going, they're going to make us move and all that. Kids don't even need to know stuff like that. Daddy needs to take that stuff and deal with it. Brother, sometimes the wife don't even have to know about it when he's taking the battle like that. Men out providing for his family. My daddy worked at the cotton mill in Clinchfield. Lord have mercy. And the other at Clinchfield, uh, East Marion, 40 years. Never went when he's, never missed a day. Went when he's sick. Went to work when he's sick. Nose blowing, vomiting. Went to work when he's sick. And then come home and work until dark. I mean, listen, brother, there's no, there's something honorable about work. Work won't hurt you. Work will help you. As a matter, I know a lot of preachers that all they want to do is ride around in an air-conditioned car and talk to people in council and wouldn't hit a lick at a snake. There's something wrong with a preacher that won't get his hands dirty and work and dig a ditch once in a while. Amen? Amen. We put us some work this week. I put old Dennis to work, Ethan to work. We dug holes. We poured concrete. We mixed it up with a shovel uh, and, and a hoe. And we, I'm telling you, we, we poured concrete and uh, put in a basketball goal. And we, uh, we mowed grass and we, we, we cut grass. They both eat up with, 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 with uh, poison oak. And I didn't get it. It just gets nasty, people, I reckon. Uh, but... Uh, but I didn't, I didn't get no poison. I, I don't, it don't bother me. But I, I, we cut weeds. There were snakes running out. We built fires. I'm telling you, listen, you know what I told Ethan? I said, listen, you, you don't have to do this, but there's something about learning how to work. Ever since him and Molly's been with us, I told him, I said, you learn how to do it. I told him how to wash a car. I told him how to, you know why? Because you ain't going to get nowhere laying on the couch playing video games when you're 30 and 40 and 50. You say, well, I, I know people has been looking for a job for 15 years and still ain't found one. Go shovel horse manure for $5 an hour is better than doing nothing. Preach it, Brother Danny. Amen. You say, well, you, I would too. I would. There was something out there in front of the church this morning where a dog had been. And I went and got the dustpan and broom, and I was headed that way. I, the pastor, with a suit on. Brother Eric there saw me going that way, and he grabbed it out of my hand and took it and did it. Listen, a man 
going to come to church and shovel dog manure up out of the parking lot will take care of his family. Amen? Man said, I'm too good for that. You ain't going to never amount to nothing. Don't get quiet on me here, y'all. Amen? I heard them boys come in here and they got their arm around this girl and he looks like he ain't never hit a lick of a snake and said, we're in love. And we want to get married, preacher. Yeah, he's in love, all right. We know who he's in love with. His self. And I say, uh, where are you going to live? Ah, we're going to live with our mama for a while. You ain't got nowhere to live? She's already going to have a baby? You're a... You're old enough to father a kid and all that, but too sorry to provide for it. Is that what you're saying? I can't find no work. Go to the car lot and tell them you'll wash all the cars for $5 a piece. Pick up beer cans, brother. A real father is a provider. It's in your DNA. You know why God calls us father? Jehovah Jireh, one of the names of God is God provides. You say, but we're in love. What are you going to eat? <laughs> Amen. Like that one little boy told his dad, he said, Daddy, I'm going to be the garbage man when I grow up. He said, why? Because he only works two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday, <laughs> when he'd come around. <laughs> Number three. Number three, a real father is a promoter. He's a promoter. Quickly, he promotes somebody other than himself. It ain't all about him all the time. He pushes his kids to do and be their best. It's not about using the whole family to make yourself look good, buddy. You, you use your ability to make your family look good. Amen? My daddy got me a job. He got, he got me a job. He said, you want to go to work? Uh, I said, I, I reckon. Uh, he said, uh, I got you a job this summer. And I said, okay. And he, got, he, knew, he knew I liked to play basketball, so he talked to some guy uh, in, uh, in Marion that was over the recreation department, Max, you pro, uh, Marshall Dark. Do you remember Marshall Dark a long time ago? Well, Mar- Mar- he was over the recreation. Daddy got me a job at what's now East Junior High School uh, 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 working in the rec department. I loved it. We played ball four or five hours a day. And uh, all we had to do was make sure we swept when it was over and everything and got paid for it. I said, "Woo! this is my kind of job. Uh, but we had to do other stuff that I did not like. And he'd make us work sometime when he'd pour concrete. When we poured, I, that's how I learned how to do that, what we done the other day, watching Daddy. He'd pour the uh, uh, sidewalk, and he'd take that trowel and do like this, and do like this, and do like this. And I thought we was done. In about 30 minutes, he'd be back out there doing it again. Honest to goodness, he'd come in, his knees is bleeding. His knees would be bleeding. He'd probably have an old cut off pair of blue jeans. He wore the ugliest shorts you ever seen in your life. And he'd just cut them off with scissors. That was his short. And he wouldn't wear a belt and he'd be hanging off of him like he's sagging before it got popular. And, uh, and uh, he'd be out there and he'd work in that concrete until it got so dark. He'd rub it to death. I thought, it looks fine, Daddy. And he'd rub it and rub it. And I, I, so I saw him take a chainsaw. Daddy had one of them saws when I was little. Daddy had a saw that you put a log across two, two uh, what you call them, them saw horses, and one of them saws where you, one got on one side and one got on the other, and he said, now pull it. And I jerked like it, and he said, no, pull it easy. How many of you ever saw one with big old teeth in it? You ever, anybody ever used one of them? Uh, he said, just let it ride, zoom, and he pull it, zoom, and he pull it, zoom, and he pull it. He cut all that grass up there around our house with a push mower. Never own a riding lawnmower. Never own a riding lawnmower. I don't see how in the world. Uh, they did all, finally got a weed eater, and when they come out, we, we used to use sling blade before weed eaters come out. Sling blade, I got right there. And uh, he used a weed eater, and my, one, of, one of my brother-in-laws put gas in it, didn't put oil, and ruined daddy's weed eater. And he paid a lot of money for that thing. Boy, he was mad. But you know what he'd do? You know what daddy would do when he, we'd get down and out? He would go out and sell a dog or trade guns. He he sell a dog now. I ain't kidding you. I mean, it's a, he talked. He had a dog. This guy one time had this dog, an old coon dog, and he said, Lawrence, this dog here ain't worth a dime. Will you sell this thing for me? 
And they was walking up the road like that, and he started bragging on that dog, bragging at the best dog you can hear at 10 miles. He, he can find them every time. By the time they got up there, that man said, you know what, I think I'll just keep that dog. <laughs> he talked him into buying his own dog. <laughs> but, you know, he'd, he'd trade dogs or trade guns and make sure, but we didn't even know that. A real daddy fights battles that his kids don't even know about to provide for them. I was telling Ethan, we was driving down here. Stand up there, Ethan. Look at him this morning. He looks like a preacher, don't he? Amen. All right. And you know what? I was telling him, we was coming down here, and I said, you know, somebody has to work for everything, right? And he said, really? I said, you see this road we're riding on? Do you know somebody had to pay for this? He said, really? Kids think the roads have just always been here. I said, somebody had to pay for this concrete we're riding on, brother. See them signs? Our taxes paid for them. This car, every bit of gas, every time you turn them lights on, somebody's working and paying for that. This air condition? Kids don't even think like that. They think, well, it's just always been here. I, 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 you mean we don't have no agony? Listen, somebody had to work and pay for every bite of food that you put in your mouth. Think about that. Everything you wear, you little brats. <laughs> Somebody worked and paid for it. A real daddy is a provider and a promoter. You have to resist the devil. Amen? Just because daddy left, uh, you don't have to be uh, a failure yourself. Just because your dad wasn't everything he ought to be, you can still be what you ought to be for the glory of God. Number four, quickly. A real daddy is a priest. He's a priest. What's a priest? A priest is somebody who stands between the sinner and God to make intercession for him. That's what a real priest is. A real priest. Jesus is our high priest. He intercedes between us and God. Daddy has the ministry of the priesthood of his family in between you and God. Now, my dad was not good in this area. My daddy wasn't saved. He never, I never heard him pray. Unless it was right before he died, he lived right the last few years of his life, about the last 10 years. He drank real heavy for many, many years, and he didn't, I never heard him pray. He never, I never heard him pray for me. He never laid hands on me or nothing like that in, in, in that way. Uh, 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 but I tell you, uh, he, he didn't know that, but I, I can still learn what it means to be a priest for my family. A priest stands between the sinner and God. You know what a real daddy will do? He'll stand in between his family and God. God, like Job did. God, if my kids have sinned, forgive them. Lord, if they're doing anything wrong, God, please watch over them. I do that all the time. Every morning of my life, 365 days a year, I pray for them three girls. First thing, first thing, I pray for my sister, her family, and for them, their husbands, and the grandkids. Every single day. And I say, God, please protect them. God, please protect them. God, please. And you know, sometimes some, when I'm going be in trouble or something be going on in their life, it wasn't right. I'd, it'd tear me all to pieces. It would bother me. I'd, I'd go home and I'd, if, listen, one of them was do, maybe doing wrong or something like that, I remember getting down and I'd say, God, please don't let the devil have my girls. Don't let him get them. Don't let him get them. And there's been lots of times I felt like I just prayed a big old hedge around them. I said, devil, don't get them. Devil, you can't have them. Devil, you might hit me. You might mess my life up. But you ain't getting my girls. God, have mercy. A real daddy is a priest to his family. Not just come to church, men. Have a prayer life. Don't just come to church every Sunday. I'm glad you do. But learn how to pray and ring the bells of heaven and build a hedge around your family. It's too much for you to bear. Just You can't put up with a rebellious kids and a wife fussing at you and the job trouble and your finances and everything all by yourself, you'll crack up. That's why men leave and get drunk and everything else. Turn it over to the Lord, brother. Say, God, I know you're able. I heard a preacher say this. It made a lot of sense. He said, <laughs> Second Chronicles seven fourteen said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, I'll forgive their sin, he'll land. You know that verse. He said, it ain't really your sins that's hindering you. It's your lack of prayer. God says, you pray and humble yourself. I'll take care of your sins. I'll, you're, 
I forgive your sins. All that stuff took care of. You've got to get down and pray. And I wish the men of Shining Light Baptist Church today would say, by the grace of God, I'm going to get me a prayer life. I'm going to get in a prayer closet. I'm going to stay, and I'm going to wait on God. It's not enough just to hear a preacher once in a while or turn on a Christian radio station. Get in the prayer closet and get all of God for your family. Be a priest. Amen. I told, you know what I told my kids? Whatever we go through, we go through it together. Whatever we face, we're going to all face it together. Family sticks together. Chris and Corey were closer growing up, and I always told them at school, I said, y'all be each other's best friend. Somebody said, who's your best friend? It's my sister. It's your best friend? My sister. Because these other people, they'll run out on you. They'll change like the wind blows. Stick with your family. Stick with your family. When it comes right down to it and it's time for you to die, you know who's going to be there, don't you? Your family. And if you're in a family where you got people that won't speak to each other and this one's mad at this one and this one's mad at I'll, you need to pray that the Lord will somehow fix it. That's a sad situation. Listen, you're happier with the whole family together and everybody getting along, eating, eating biscuits and gravy, uh, not even having maybe some liver mush than you are at the steakhouse or at the beach at a $30 a meal crab leg buffet when everybody's fussing and fighting all the time. Nothing's right. Finally, I'll say this and I'm through. A real daddy is a prophet. He's a prophet. You say, preacher, I'm a prophet. Yes, sir. You know what you do? You prophesy over your children. Now, I'm not talking about seeing the future as in, but a real daddy sees what his kids can do. And, buddy, he'll, his words mean something. I've told you what my dad did. He, how, he wasn't even saved. He prophesied over me. And he, I don't think he was thrilled when I come in and told him I was called to preach. I was 19, 19, didn't know what I was doing. I got saved at 18, 11 months later, I walked in and said, guess what, I'm going to be a preacher. And he went, well, I mean, the only preacher he knew, I think, was his great aunt or something up in West Virginia. <laughs> and, uh, he, and finally... He goes, oh, Mom, he said, well, he's got enough of my mouth and your goodness to make a good one. That was his prophecy over me. And he's right. He's right. And I'm telling you, your words mean, if you're continually talking down to your kid, you ain't no good, you ain't no count, why ain't you look better than this? Is that the best you can do? That ain't going to help them. And I'm not saying brag on them, make them think they're Michael Jordan when they ain't. Prophesy over him. I'll give you one illustration and I'm done. Rachel in the Bible. The Bible said she was dying. And when she was having that child in the book of Genesis, her soul was in departing. And Rachel died giving birth to this baby. And as she was dying, she was miserable and, and hurt and dying. And she said, I'll name him Benoi, Benoi, which means the son of my sorrow. That's his name. Said that boy's going to be the son of my sorrow. His mama died when he was little. No mama to raise him. And they brought him in there to, to uh, Jacob, his daddy. And Jacob, the great patriarch, the man of God. Oh, Jacob, come in. They said, well, here's your baby, Benoi. And he said, no, 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 that ain't his name. His name ain't Benoi. His mama died, and I hate she was in sorrow. That boy's name is Benjamin. And that boy, that means son of my right hand and strength and power, and Benjamin grew up, and Jacob said, he's the son of my right hand, and he became the father of those kings of Israel. His daddy prophesied over him. Benjamin had every reason in the world to be a dysfunctional kid and get in trouble and get on drugs, but he became a leader and the father of the kings of Israel. His daddy said, his name ain't no Benoi, his name's Benjamin, and that's going to be a great man. A real daddy prophesied over his children. Maybe you're here today and you'd give anything in the world to have a daddy like I've described here this morning. I've got good news for you. The Lord said one time, David said, when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Jesus, God will be the father that you never had in this world if you'll let him. He's the best father you could ever have. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, I've made a mess out of it, preacher. My kids ain't got no confidence in me because I've been such a terrible dad. 
be a good day to start all over right here today and be the daddy that you need to be. Let's stand by our heads for prayer.